All right. Hi, everyone. I think we're live. Thanks so much for joining me this evening for the live stream. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Mink Toner Ink Pen, aka the Mink Toner Ink Marker. This is a product that several of you have commented about and emailed me about recently, and I wanted to give you a more in-depth review and test it out on a few different surfaces. Links to all of the supplies that I'll be using here can be found in the description area below the video. And if you'd like to see more videos about DIY hot foiling, I actually have a whole playlist and you can check out the playlist link in the little eye circle that is up at the top right of the screen. Okay, so before I get into testing, I wanna give you a little bit of background on my experience with the Mink Toner Ink Pen to this point. Uh, this is not a new product. It's been around for over a year, I think, and I first tried one out about a year ago. So this is actually, I, I hope this is the right one. This is actually the first mink toner ink pen that I got. And what happened was when I tried to write with it, no matter what I tried or you know, whatnot, I always got a pretty streaky result. So the way that these pens work, they're actually a lot like um, paint pens that I have. So you'll notice if you shake them, they have that little, I'm not even sure what it's called, but that little clicky thing uh, that helps to basically mix all of the components that are in this part together before you use it. So no matter how much I shook that um, and depressed the tip, so uh, that's another thing about these types of pens. When you get them, there's actually uh, no ink in the tip, so the tip will be white. And what you have to do in order to use them and get the ink flowing is you have to get a piece of paper and basically push down on that tip until the ink starts flowing. And that can sometimes take a few minutes um, and a, a lot of pushing down and eventually you'll start to see the ink come into that tip and then eventually it will saturate the tip and then you can write with it. So what happened with this first pen was no matter how much I tried to write with it or shook it up or did the tip, I always got a pretty streaky result, which was obviously not ideal. So. Um, this pen actually now has probably been sitting fairly unused for the better part of a year. So you can see, even though when I'm pushing down on that tip, even if it's making like a, a nice dark black um, in that little dot, it just, it really won't write. So I think that, you know, most of the ink that is in this tip has now dried out. And so like I said, this is a lot like other paint pens that I have. I don't think it's necessarily a defect of this particular product uh, because a lot of other paint pens that I have, they do eventually dry out too. The tips will dry out and they'll dry out to the point sometimes where you can't even depress the tip anymore. So after I tried this, getting this uh, to write cleanly for a while and it wasn't working, I just sort of gave up on it for a while. But recently, I actually got another one of these. And in doing so, I saw a lot of the reviews out there, and it seems like a lot of other people are having the, the streakiness issue. Um, so I think, you know, I, I can't say for sure what's going on. Obviously, any product that's mass produced, mass produced in any amount is going to have, you're going to have a few defective products in there. So I'm not sure what was going on, if maybe the pens were older and I can't say for sure. But what I do know is when I got the second one, and again, uh, the ink is already in the tip. When you first get these, there will be no ink in the tip. It'll just be white. And then you'll, you just press the tip down. When I got the second one, you can see how much better it writes. And it's much, you can see how dark and it's not streaky at all. So I think that first pen that I got just may have been part of that batch or I'm not sure what happened. I just could never get consistent results with it. 
um, but I've had much, much better results with this one. And you can see, and if you, uh, if you start writing sometimes like this, you'll notice that the ink will get a little bit lighter. And so what I do in those situations is I'll just depress that, that tip down again and get the ink flowing nice and strong again. And it works really well. So if you're not familiar with the mink and DIY hot foiling, basically when you do DIY hot foiling, typically what happens is you'll, you'll print your image or whatever you want to foil You'll print it onto a piece of cardstock first before foiling it, and you'll use a laser printer. And you want to use a laser printer because laser printers have toner, and toner is required for DIY hot foiling this way because what happens is it it can it's toner is a powder, and so when you run your print through your printer that toner ink melts onto the surface. And what happens then when you go and you run it through a foiling machine, and I use the mink, some people use regular heat laminating machines um, and have very good results. The mink has gotten me the best results, so that's what I use. But when you run your laser print through the machine with the foil, the toner then remelts, and as it's doing so, as it's running through the machine, the foil melts. The foil actually bonds with that melting toner. And that's how you get your foil print. So something like this pen, this toner ink pen, allows you to create a foil result and add foil details and lettering and whatnot to, to projects without actually having to have a laser printer. So, you know, this is I'm not sure, five to seven dollars, I'm thinking that this is. And obviously a laser printer is a lot more expensive. I'd, I've had a laser printer for many years, um, so it wasn't a big deal for me because I already had one. But if you're not in the market for a laser printer, but you still want to be able to do foiling, something like this, this toner pen is an option. So what I'm gonna do is, as I'm, I'm going to basically show you the results of this, on a few different kinds of surfaces. So the first surface is going to be Hammer Mill. Um, I think it's called Digital Color Copy 80 pound cardstock, which is a great value and it gives very great foil results. Uh, then I have this Duralar. And I love the Duralar for foiling because it looks like vellum even though it's not vellum. It's, I, I get the uh, matte kind, which is a frosted. So you can see it's a nice frosted look. It looks a lot like vellum, but it's a lot smoother than any vellum paper that I have found. And I get fantastic results with this, whereas I really haven't been able to get results, great results with any vellum paper that I've tried. So I'm gonna try the ink pen on this. And finally, I'm going to try it on this sea line laser acetate. So this acetate, um, it's clear acetate. You can see here's the sheet here. It's completely clear. And this particular acetate is made specifically to be run through laser printers. And I have gotten also fantastic foiling results with this when I do laser prints on it. So I'm going to try this with the ink pen as well. So those are the three surfaces that I'm going to be doing. So let's start with the cardstock. So I have a little piece cut here. And I'm just going to, I'll bring my little, I always like to have my scrap piece of cardstock here for when I want to get that ink flowing again, if, it's, if it starts to get a little bit patchy or streaky. I just, uh, press depress the tip a few times and it gets that ink flowing really strongly again. So if you're a lefty <laughs> like I am, you know when you're doing any work like this, you have to be careful because um, this is not an instant drying product. And so you have to be careful when you're writing or doing anything with it because it will smear. And 
it's just a fact of life when you're a lefty, I guess. So just be aware of that. It is not, it isn't an instant drying product. So I'll just do a little bit of lettering on this. I'm gonna get that ink flowing more strongly again. So I'm just going to write hello. And again, I wanna be careful because I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna sort of like angle my hand so I don't start to smear. Okay, so I've written that out and it is, I don't know if you can see, it is still a little bit, a little bit wet here. So we want to, I don't want to run this through when it's wet at all because I'm not sure what will happen. So I just want to let this dry. So I guess while this, while this is drying, I'm actually going to turn on my mink. So I'll turn it on and then I want to press the button until I'm at setting four. And setting four is the setting I use for most everything that I foil and I get really good results with it. So it's the setting that I use most often. So I think while we're waiting for, this is actually probably almost dry here. I'm just gonna still set this to the side and I'm gonna get out a piece of the Duralar, which again is that the matte sort of uh, vellum look item. And then I'll just, I'll also write hello on it. So on both the vellum and the acetate, I noticed that they do seem more prone to streakiness, which honestly, when I think about it, it makes sense because they are much smoother surfaces. They're, this isn't exactly glossy, but it's still a lot smoother than just regular cardstock. Oh, my mink is up to temperature already. Um, so if I see any streakiness or patchy areas, what I can do is I can just always go back and trace over that. Or if you want to like uh, thicken your lines like with calligraphy, and I'm not doing a particularly neat job of this, but you can sort of see that you can just go back in there and you can thicken those lines. I'm just gonna quickly finish that. And so you can see it's, there might be like a slight bit of streakiness and you can just go back in and just draw over that and thicken that up or, you know, make the line a little bit less shaky if you're me and you have shaky hands. So I'm going to set this aside because these uh, the acetate, both the acetate and the Duralar here actually take more time to dry, which again, it makes sense because they're, they're not really porous surfaces and they're, they're very smooth. So this will take a little bit of time to dry. So lastly, I'm going to letter the same thing on the clear acetate that I have here. And you can see on this acetate, there's definitely a little bit of streakiness right there where the ink is not showing up great. So I'm gonna go back over to my cardstock and just press down that tip to get the ink flowing more. But again, part of it is also, see, when I draw over it, it becomes a much more solid line. But part of the, the sort of streakiness, if you get it, which it's looking pretty good here, is that it's just a very glossy, non-porous surface. So usually just going back in and retracing any of those lines, and this one again is a little bit light, so I'm gonna go back and trace that. You can see right away, it makes it, much more solid and it looks great. So, like I said, both the uh, both the Duralar here and the acetate need a little bit of time to try. So I actually already have some that are dry. They've been sitting for a couple of hours. They really only need, I would say each of these maybe only need like 10 to 15 minutes to completely dry. 
um, but I made some beforehand so they'd be completely dry. And um, our cardstock is completely dry as well. So I actually want to make another cardstock one because what I'm going to do is I'm going to test all of these surfaces with two kinds of foil. I'm going to do the deco foil, the gold deco foil, and the gold mink reactive foil to see if there's any difference in coverage uh, when I foil with both of these on the same surfaces. So I do want to do one more hello in the cardstock. So I'm just going to quickly do that. And if you have any questions as I'm going along or you want to see me do something specific that I'm not doing with this, please just comment in the live chat and you can let me know. So this was not the greatest lettering job, but it, it's the, the lines are solid. It looks good. It's a good sample to foil. All right, so now I have both of my cardstock uh, hellos. And for this one on the left, this is going to be the deco foil one. And for the one on the right, it's going to be the mink reactive foil. And I don't know if you can tell just looking at this, but the, the deco foil is to the touch a little bit thicker than the mink reactive foil. So it's actually easier to to cut as well when you're working with it. Hey Keith, yes, we're playing with shiny things again. <laughs> All right, so I have uh, for my carrier sheet, I'm just gonna use this piece of plain printer paper that I folded in half. And again, this one on the left is the deco foil. So I'm just gonna shiny side up, cover this with, uh, cover the cardstock with the foil, and then I'm going to run it through my mink here. I'm just going to do that, and that'll just take a minute. So again, like I said, if you have any questions as I'm going along, or you want to see me do something specific that I'm not doing with the toner ink pen, please just comment in the live chat and let me know. So this is just about all the way through. I always get impatient, even though it doesn't take that long. <laughs> All right, so now is the magic part. So we've run this through and we're just gonna peel that off and you can see how great the results are. The results are really good. I think the coverage is, is really good. There's, there's no streakiness in the result whatsoever. So I'm really happy with that. All right, so this was the deco foil. And now I'm going to do the same uh, exact thing with the mink reactive foil and run that through. So I'll just run that through quickly. And it really only, especially if you're using your um, printer paper as your carrier sheet, it takes a maybe a minute or two a minute I would say to run through uh, when you're using the bigger the bigger carrier sheet like I have the 12 inch mink so I have this big carrier sheet and it takes a lot longer so I get especially impatient but I'm just impatient because I want to see the magic and I want to see the shiny so all right uh, this is the mink reactive foil and I'm going to peel that off and actually I don't know if you can see there are slight areas around the edges where you can see um, the coverage wasn't fantastic. Um, it's still pretty darn good, I would say. Um, but I actually feel like I got better results here with the uh, gold deco foil. But again, this is still not bad at all. I hope you can see that. I'm not sure if you can see where the foil didn't stick, but. There are, there are slight places basically around the edge. All right, so this is the Mink Reactive Foil in Gold for the cardstock. So next we're gonna move on and I've got the, um, the Matte Duralar. And these have both been drying for a while, so they're both completely dry. 
And I want to let you know, I did do some testing a little, uh, a little while earlier and I didn't let, this is on the acetate and I didn't let it completely, the ink completely dry. I don't know if you can see this, but especially at the top and on the left of the E and also on the left inside of the H, you can see sort of little bubble dots. And that's where, when I ran it through the mink machine, it sort of spooged out and in the areas where it was wet and made those little smeary dot areas. So I would definitely recommend waiting till it's completely dry on a shiny surface like the Duralar or the acetate before running it through just because it could smear or spooge out areas. Hi, Mary. You know what? I've, I've seen a lot of stuff about that too, that you're supposed to wait until it's completely cool to peel it off. And I've also seen uh, people say that you peel it off right away. I, I'm i impatient, so I always just peel it off right away. But I honestly really haven't had any issues just peeling it off. A lot of times also after you, uh, as you're running it through the machine, by the time it gets out the other end, it is actually pretty cool. So, um, but I haven't had any issues really just peeling it right away before waiting before it's uh, completely cool. So that's just my experience. All right, so we're gonna do the Duralar now. And this is the deco foil. And on the right here, we have the mink reactive foil. So I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit orderly here. And I'm going, this is, this is the deco foil. So I, again, I have my carrier sheet that's just a folded piece of printer paper. And I'm going to run that through. And again, it only really takes a minute for, for a piece this small. I'm going to try to keep this organized as I move along since I don't want to mix up the foils. But like I said earlier, the you can tell just to the touch that the uh, Thermo Web foil is just a little bit thicker than the Mink Reactive foil. And so I like working with the, de the Deco foil because it's a lot easier to cut with scissors. Okay, yeah, Mary, I will. I'll try. I'm going to... Um, this is run through so I'm gonna peel this off first and then, then I'll try the mink foil again to see if it does look better if I let it completely drop um, completely cool thanks for the suggestion I'll do that in a minute here Oop, I actually missed a little bit of foil on the left here so that did not get covered but that's okay we can still see what our result is here so again this is the deco foil and this is a really Great result. I, this is a really this is a really good result. I don't, except for that place that I actually missed putting the foil over. I don't see any areas where it did not adhere. So the coverage is excellent on this. I hope you can see how nice that looks. So I'm going to set that aside over in the deco foil pile, and I'm going to get another piece of the cardstock here, and I'm going to. I'll let her on that again, and then we'll try another pass with the mink foil and we'll let it completely dry or completely cool. I had a little streaky there. All right. Okay, so I'll set that aside for a minute uh, just so the the toner ink actually dries because it does take a minute or two on the cardstock. So I'll set that aside right there. And then I will actually do the mink on the, the mink foil on the Duralar. And I'll let this completely cool before I peel it off to see if there is what kind of result I get. So this is actually almost dry right now. So it just takes a minute or two on cardstock to dry completely. And you can actually tell, I don't want to I don't want to run my finger over it right now because it still might just be a little bit damp, but there is a texture to this and it is a little bit sticky. 
So I'm not sure if it has some sort of adhesive in it or what's going on there, but it's just something that I noticed as I was doing my testing earlier. All right, so this I'm going to let this cool off completely before I peel it. So it's slightly warm. And I will, in the meantime, get out another piece of the mink reactive foil so we can redo this hello. I'm going to run that through. So this is the mink reactive foil, our second try with the hello on the cardstock. So this is just still slightly warm. All right, so this actually feels pretty cool to the touch here. So now I'm gonna peel this off. This is the mink foil on the Duralar. All right, that is actually a really good result. Really good result. I can't, um, I can't see any areas that weren't covered along the edges or anything like that. There might be just like a tiny area in the O here uh, that isn't covered with the foil, but otherwise, and that honestly, sometimes that happens just because there might be kinks or there's a scratch on the foil or something like that. So that just happens from time to time. So that could have been what happened here. But otherwise, this is an excellent result. So this is the mink foil on the Duralar. So now the, our second try with the mink foil on the cardstock is done. And it's, it's actually pretty cool right now, but I'll leave it for another few seconds here until it's completely cool. I think we're, we're just about there. It cools down pretty quickly. Right, so this is, again, second try with mink foil on the cardstock. You know what? Mary, I think you're onto something because this is actually a much better result than that first time. So even though I haven't noticed a difference when I'm doing like laser printing with the foil, whether it's cool or warm when I peel that foil off, it might make a difference with this uh, with the toner ring pen because I feel like this is definitely, you probably can't see on the video here, but I feel like this is definitely a much better result than that first time. So this is the first one and there are definite areas, especially around the edges of the, the letters that did not get coverage with the foil, whereas this result is a much better result. And these are both with the mink gold foil. So thank you a lot, Mary, because that is a very good tip for this particular product um, to wait until uh, it's cool before peeling the mink foil off. It doesn't seem to make as much of a difference with the uh, uh, thermoweb foil because I peeled that off when it was warm and I got excellent results, but it definitely seems to have made some sort of a difference with the mink reactive foil. So thanks again, Mary, for that tip. All right, so we just have the acetate left now and again um i have a couple that i did earlier that are already completely completely dry so i'm going to take this first one and use the thermo web the deco foil on that and then i'll take this one over here and this one will be the mink reactive foil. So first I'm going to run the Thermoweb gold foil through on the acetate. So again, it'll just take a minute. Wow, that is a really good deal on oil, Mary. You know, I need to, I want to start doing more like t-shirts and tote bags and things. That's something that I really haven't explored a lot. So it's really good to know that when you use the foil on t-shirts, it's called a cold, cold peel. Um, and it also seems to work, um, the cold peel technique seems to work really well or better you know, you definitely get better results with the mink reactive foil if you let it cool off before peeling it off when you're using the toner pen. 
All right, so this, again, this is the acetate and this is the ThermoWeb Echo Foil. And again, excellent result. This is very good coverage. Again, I can't see, you know, looking around, you might see little microscopic areas where there's no coverage, but that's honestly totally normal and that does happen sometimes. But this is excellent coverage. So this works really well. I know, Jan, you know, I thought, Jan says that she wishes there was a stamp pad for toner. And I wish that too. I, because I do, I get a lot of questions, especially um, after I have, I did videos for the reactive paint and um, the reactive mist. And a lot of people have asked, you know, can you use this with stamps? And because they are more glue-like products, I'm a little bit nervous about telling people to try it. I'm actually a little bit afraid to try it myself. But I think that there are a lot of people who are interested in having some sort of a stamp pad that can work with this. So I'm going to have to maybe look into it, maybe get over my fear a little bit and try it out with um, those other products. Um, it would be great if they put out a stamp pad. Right. All right, so again, excellent results with the ThermoWeb DecoFoil and the acetate. So now, now we just have to try the Mink Oil with the acetate as well. So that is our final try. Okay, so we're just gonna run this through and it just takes a minute. Mary, yes, you can make your own stamp pad and you know what I did and I haven't tried this out yet. I actually bought, I bought a blank st stamp pad with exactly what Jan suggested in mind, uh, making some sort of a stamp pad um, for, for uh, mink foiling. But I guess, I guess I need to get up the nerve to just like try it out. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna put in the pad. I was thinking of using some of the mist because the the mink mist is actually pretty thin and I think it would work. It would work well. So I might very well have to try that out. So stay tuned. There may be another video coming soon with that. All right, so this is the mink reactive foil on the acetate. I'm just gonna wait um, a, a few seconds here. It's almost completely cool right now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait until it's completely cool. Mary, there's such a thing as like, you can just buy the toner ink uh, by itself. Uh, Cause I, I've looked around and all I see, I've seen um, like the powdered toner that you can buy, but I actually haven't seen like an ink. So is there something that you mix the powder with or how does that work? All right, so this is the mink reactive foil on the acetate and I'm gonna peel that off. It's completely cool. And you can actually see some areas on the acetate, which I'm not sure why a slight bit of that foil is sticking, but the, the results here are excellent too. You, can, you can't really see, there, there's no toner showing around the edges, nothing. It's very good coverage. Oh, okay, Versamark or Glycerin, you can use that as a toner ink, okay. All right, so I think we're pretty much finished with the testing here. And I got really good results um, with all three here. On um, This is the Deco Web, or the Thermo Web Deco Foil Gold. And I got excellent results on all three surfaces that I tried it on. I got great results with the, with the cardstock. I got equally great results with the Duralar, except for that little bit that I actually missed with the foil, so that was my own fault. And then, finally, I got really great results as well on the acetate. With the, the Mink Reactive Foil in gold, um, my first time around with the cardstock, I didn't get 
I got good results, but not great results. And thanks to Mary's tip, I actually got much better results the second time I tried it because I let the foil and everything completely cool before I peeled it off. And that gave me a much better result. So thanks again, Mary, for that tip. And I also got excellent results with both the Duralar and the Mink Reactive Foil and the Acetate in the Mink Reactive Foil. So overall, I think that these um, Mink Toner Ink Pens are a really good option if you just wanna sort of add custom details to projects that you're, you're working on, do lettering with, you just have to keep in mind that they're a lot like a paint pen, so you wanna shake it up pretty well before you use it. And when the ink is starting to get a little bit patchy and it's starting, the tip's starting to you know, lose that saturation of the ink, you just wanna depress the, the tip down and get that ink flowing again and you get, you get nice, good, solid coverage. And you also want to keep in mind that like most paint pens over time, these probably will dry out eventually, like the, the first one that I had, which I just was not able to get consistent results with. Um, I got much, much better results with the second one that I bought. And I think if you keep, if you continue to use it on a regular basis, I don't think that tip will dry out, but probably over time, you know, you're either going to run out of ink or something will start to try, dry out. So just keep in mind, that's just the nature of this kind of project. So, all right, let's go to the chat, see what's going on there before I go. All right. So Keith's favorite is the Duralar, and I have to admit, I really do like that look too. It's just a really nice look. You've got that translucency, sort of vellum look, and just that nice, shiny lettering on there. All right, so I feel like this went pretty well, and I would def definitely recommend one of these ink, you know, I wasn't so sure about it after my experience with the first pen, where it was pretty streaky, and I just couldn't get consistent results. But with this second, the second pen that I bought, I've gotten much better results. And you can see just with the results tonight, how good a result you can get. And the foil coverage is very solid. You can do lettering with this. You can, and again, you know, it will take some practice and this is a special, you know, a specific kind of pen, very much like a paint pen. So, but you can get really good results with this and it's a great um, option to look into and it's not that expensive and it's a great um, alternative if you don't have a laser printer and aren't necessarily in the market for one. I've heard that trick too. Uh, Mary says that if you have a spot that needs fixing, like a spot that got mi missed um, when you ran it through the mink or your foiling machine, um, you just dab it with uh, some tacky glue and then run it through and refoil. I've actually, I think I've seen someone do just, um, instead of running it through uh, through the machine, and this might be what you do, Mary, uh, you just uh, put the tacky glue on the surface there and then they'll just like rub it like this um, until that foil comes off and sticks to that glue. So that is a, another really good tip. Um, for fixing any blank areas or areas that might not have gotten covered uh, when you ran it through the foiling machine. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. Um, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and please consider subscribing to my channel to see more videos like this one. I really appreciate you watching this evening, and thank you, Mary and Jan and Keith and everyone who participated in the chat and gives, gave such great tips about everything. And um, I hope you'll tune in again soon. Thanks so much for watching.